How can you learn new technical things fast? I mean, nowadays it feels like each and every day a new technology is coming out. Not to mention with the rise of AI, it has made technology move at such a quick pace. Is it even possible? I sat down with three experts to understand how they are able to learn new technologies quickly and keep up with tech. From Antonella, who is a software engineer at Microsoft, Sky, who is a computer science student, and Don Allen III, who is always up to date, well, not even up to date, ahead of tech news and trends. Now, through these conversations, I uncovered how you too can learn how to stay up to date with tech and learn new tech fast. Whether it be a programming language, learn about a tech trend, speak about tech better, we got you covered. Now, the first thing I needed to uncover is how are these individuals really learning new technical skills? Like what methods do they implement at work when they're studying in their day-to-day -day lives? I sat down with Antonella and I loved how she shared how she was able to ramp up very quickly at Microsoft on a new code base, I mean, new team. It feels really intimidating. Here's though how she did it. And even if you're not working on an organization, how you can too. At work, I get thrown into the big repo for a project. Um, and I get to see what everyone else has coded and I get to see their previous PRs and that kind of stuff. So for instance, say that you're on the PowerPoint team and the, your manager tells you to add a new button that adds a signature to a PowerPoint. And you're like, okay, I've never been on this code. I don't know, maybe you don't even know the language because that happens sometimes when I started, I didn't know C Sharp. Uh, so you're like, okay, where do I even start? And what I've started doing is, okay, let me see something that's similar. Let's see the, the button to add an image. And I'll go into the code and see who worked on that. Go through like git blame and see who's been in there before. Um, and just go through the PRs and kind of try to make sense of it. Okay, this first PR was the basics. And so this is what they did. And just work my way, way through there. You'd think it's kind of hard doing it if you're not in a work environment, but there's a bunch of code on GitHub. Uh, there's a lot of open source stuff. So I'd say go into it and start getting your, your hands dirty with it. And it actually helps a lot. And I mean, as Antonella mentioned, one of the best ways, I mean, I used to always do this when I was first learning to code is to use open source projects. That's a great tip. Now, another method or technique that whether you are learning something really technical, like a programming language, or maybe you're on the theory side of things that you can implement is a technique that was introduced by Richard Feynman. And this is a technique actually that Sky, who studies computer science, uses when she is learning new things. I'll learn something new. And then kind of later that night, I'll be telling someone, I'll tell my husband, um, kind of like what I'm learning and going over it again and almost putting it into my own words and like acting like the teacher, like I'm, I'm teaching you something that I know gives you kind of like the confidence boost and it really solidifies in your brain what you just learned. Okay, but here's the thing. It's one thing to use these techniques to ramp up your learnings, learn at a quicker pace, and also make your life less stressful by using actual techniques that these individuals mentioned. But it brings up the question, how do you know what to spend your time learning? I mean, there are infinite possibilities, it feels like nowadays. I spoke to Don Allen III, and here's what he had to say. I know people usually go to the, like, they, they look for brand videos or pump someone's like, oh, here's my reaction with this new thing. But it's like, all right, are you a developer? Oh, you're not a developer. Okay, I'm gonna maybe take your idea with a grain of salt as a trend to follow. But if a developer has that to say, that's a that's a big deal to me. Because if and if there's a lot of developers excited around, then I'll probably want to focus more energy on it. And if there's not a lot of developers around. I'll probably focus less energy on it. So why focus on what developers are getting excited about? Well, I mean, for one thing, they are the ones building this technology. So that makes total sense. But what if you are a developer wondering what to focus on? That is where having community really comes into play. Whether online or in person, having that group of individuals that will support you, share with what they are learning, and also in turn, make it feel as though you have this place where when you have questions about what you are focusing on or what you are learning, you can go to. But here's the thing, not only do you need to be aware of what others are focusing on and sharing your excitement about that, you need to have this underlying thread throughout it. What is that you ask? Curiosity. I love the story that Don Allen III shared of the importance of staying curious. I just kind of follow what actually makes me curious. Um, I, one of my favorite children's books was uh, Harold and the Purple Crayon. Um, it's this little character I grew up with reading his books uh, and he has this magical purple crayon and whatever he draws comes to life. 
He uses it to solve any problem in his world. And so I like how that fictional character basically approaches every problem with curiosity. So if he's hungry, he just draws some food. If he's stuck on this island, he'll just draw a boat. Okay, so, so far we've covered techniques to learn new technical concepts at a quicker pace or break them down really easy. We've also learned the importance of staying curious and how to keep up with tech as it evolves so quickly. But it brings up the question, how do you break down what you are learning, especially with these technical concepts, whether it's for programming or once again, theory and the business side into manageable parts, like making them digestible. These concepts, a lot of them can feel so overwhelming. Here's how Sky does it while studying computer science. When I come home, I'm usually like an introvert when it comes to my work. Like I like to work alone. I don't love to collaborate when I don't have to, like group projects. I don't, I don't know if anyone likes group projects really, but um, yeah, so it's more, it's just relatable that like I, I like to work alone, but I think that um, it's really important to at least stay connected with a few people in your classes. Um, right now I'm taking, I switched to kind of like online classes for this semester and last semester because I live kind of far from campus, but it's very isolating. Like you'll barely have any contact with your professors, with other peers, um, but something that's been life-saving is usually somebody in the class will make a discord. But here's the really cool thing. This advice wasn't just from Sky. It was really threaded throughout everyone I spoke to. Here's what Antonella had to say. Start small with, for instance, like if you're starting a new language, the basics. Figure out like a little bit of the syntax just to get you by and then start going into projects. Because if you also get too stuck in tutorial purgatory, you never get out of it. So try to get your hands dirty as soon as possible, just building stuff. And then the next part would be go in small pieces. So build maybe like, like I was saying earlier, if it's a button to something that already exists or a very small web app that just like shows hello world or something like that. Um, and celebrate those wins because that's a huge milestone in your journey and it means that you are able to produce something that someone else might not be able to so it's a really big step and if you only look at oh i don't know all these other things then you are always going to feel terrible about your progress out of all this so the biggest thing i love that we are ending with is around celebrating your wins not just your big wins because that bar keeps on going higher and higher and in the end we always are chasing what comes next but as she mentioned really taking a step back and celebrating your wins along the way your what maybe feel like smaller wins are really big wins that when you look back you, you need to pat yourself on the back. You did that. It's pretty incredible. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to hit that subscribe button for more videos where I will be bringing on other tech experts in various fields. Leave in the comments who you want to see on my channel and I'll talk to you all soon. Thanks everyone.